Welcome back to another hardware news recap for the last week. We have a lot of good news items for this one, including the AMD RX 560, aka RX 460 controversy right now, the Intel Z170 motherboard that has been made to support Coffee Lake. That's an interesting one as well. Uh, Cascade Lake as a CPU coming up from Intel, and then a couple sales for the week and some other new products coming out to the market. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB closed loop liquid cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus three 120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake ring fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So let's start with the RX 560 discussion. And we'll start it off with this. Does anyone remember when AMD launched Shade at NVIDIA? They stuffed a, a bunch of shade into a shade cannon and fired shade at NVIDIA. And it was basically a Twitter campaign that said four gigabytes means four gigabytes. And this was going on right around when the GTX 970 controversy of being 3.5 gigabytes plus 512 of slower memory was going on. So if four equals four, one would also assume that 1024 equals 1024 or that 896 equals 896. The thing here is that the AMD RX 560 graphics card when it shipped was basically an RX 460 that was fully unlocked, that was mentioned to us in media. It was actually in one of the first two lines in our review of the 560. It was basically an RX 560 is an RX 460 with the two extra CUs unlocked for you. You could have unlocked them on the 460 previously with a BIOS flash and a signed driver, but uh, the 560 unlocked it for you, which gave, in our testing, at the high end, 7 to 9% performance increase over a 460 in the two that we tested, and that was from the extra CUs. You have two extra CUs, each one has 64 cores, so you end up at 1024 instead of 896. That's a pretty noteworthy difference. And uh, the clock speeds were a bit different as well, just like all the 500 series. So that was the whole point of the 560, was is a better 460 that's unlocked for you in advance. And uh, now, looking around Newegg and elsewhere, a few folks have pointed out that the RX 560s are available in 896 core versions, actually at the same price as the 1024 core variants in some cases. Uh, and so these are RX 460s, that's what it is. And before getting further into it, for those of you who have tweeted at us or suggested articles online or asked, uh, I, there have been a lot of questions of, can you test the two different types of RX 560s? We already did. We tested them in like April or whenever they came out. The RX 560 that is claimed on Newegg, assuming the listing is legitimate and not just a description error, that RX 560 with 896 cores is an RX 460. There is no difference. Whatever difference exists is in whatever clocks the AIB partner has pre-applied. So in terms of performance, look at our review of the 560 versus the 460. That's the difference between them. Now, as for what's going on here, we asked AMD for a statement. They have not provided one yet, but they are working on one at time of filming. So there's a good chance we'll get one around or slightly after when this goes live. As soon as we do, we'll put it in the top comment below along with a link to the article about it if we write one. In the meantime, basically uh, it comes down to some RX 560s being RX 460s, i.e. clearing inventory or a mistake by the retailer. And uh, then basically it's gonna be the worst performance than you actually think you're getting because you're looking at the car and buying it based on a review we wrote and everyone else wrote that's built on a, a device that has more cores. So that's a problem if it's, if it's real. Now, looking into this, trying to determine if this is actually a problem, the first step, of course, call or discuss with AMD uh, and wait for a statement, which we did. We didn't get an immediate rebuttal, so uh, we'll see what they say. Next step was contact a bunch of AIB partners who were caught off guard with the whole issue, so they're looking into it on their end as well. They've emailed AMD, and, uh, or at least the ones we've spoken with were caught off guard. And then the, the third step on our end was check the AMD specifications page. The RX 560 spec page now, when it says compute units, it says 14 slash 16. And when it says stream processors, it says 896 slash 1024. 
If you use archive.org way back machine, go back to when it launched, it says compute unit, max compute unit 16. So max compute units you could perceive to mean up to. So not technically RON if you look at it that way. Up to 16. Was it marketed that way? Absolutely not. It was marketed as 16. But either way, there's a slight hole there to escape through. The streaming processors one is a little bit harder because that one says specifically 1024. It doesn't say up to 1024 or 896 to 1020. It just says 1024, which goes with 16 compute units. Mathematically, that's how it works. So the marketing and the spec page originally would suggest those numbers. The new spec page aligns with the new egg listings, which would lead me to believe presently that it is not necessarily just an error by the retailer. The new spec page change coincides with those and suggests a reduced core count and uh, by way of reduced CU count. So there's a couple other things in there as well. And that basically, if you're looking at reviews, it's an RX 460. Just be really careful if you buy a 560. It's, it's unfortunate that we have to say this because we just went through and recommended the 560 on our builds. So make sure you buy the right one. There are only a couple right now that seem to be showing the 896. Uh, Power Color has one of the devices up. But yeah, if, it's not, if the count's not listed, don't buy it or find the count listed somewhere else. Uh, other than this, AMD's changed a couple things on the, the spec page. So for example, they changed that the compute listed in teraflops is now listed in gigaflops, which I guess bigger number looks better or something like that. But it's not actually changed, I don't think. It's just a different measure unit of measurement. So yeah, we've reached out to AMD for comment. We'll update when we get one. But be careful of 460 and 560 purchases. And AMD, maybe don't throw shade around if you're going to do something similar later. Um, yeah, so very sad, pretty annoying. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe they have a statement that actually makes sense. Or maybe it's just trying to clear inventory. We'll let you know for sure. Uh, next story, though, is on the Z170 board that from a Baidu user now supports Coffee Lake, apparently. And this was validated with CPU-Z validation and everything. So the initial stories about the Intel Z370 platform indicated that Intel needed to make the change to accommodate the Coffee Lake CPUs for improved power efficiency and things like that. Different pin arrangement in terms of what each pin does, but not the different pin count or even a different socket type. So the reason for Z370 to exist was mostly just the power layout and design of the board, something that a couple of board partners told us as well. And this meant that Z170 and Z270 boards would not support Coffee Lake, but a user was able to mod the MSI Z170A X Power Titanium to support an 8350K CPU, and they did so by tuning microcode and BIOS on the board. The system boots all the way into Windows and even registers the CPU with CPU-Z validation confirming the change worked, but a few things aren't fully functional, like the IGP being disabled and the first PCIe slot not working. But it does look like it at least boots and gets into Windows. And to build on this, we kind of shortly mentioned a long time ago that uh, an, a partner of Intel informed us prior to launch that they had functional older boards, like 100 series, 200 series, that were running Coffee Lake CPUs successfully and that uh, basically it was just a switch that was thrown to make that not possible. The explanation, depend, again, who was asked, was basically it's to support it in terms of power efficiency, but uh, clearly you can kind of make it work. So kind of interesting. I don't know that you should expect to be able to do it yourself anytime soon with a fully functional board, but we'll keep an eye on it. And if you hear more, please let us know. You can tweet at GamersNexus. Next story, uh, still Intel, so Cascade Lake X, this is a continuation of the HEDT line, and Intel's looking at fourth quarter 2018 for the shipment of what they're calling Cascade Lake X. And this is still on the accelerated schedule right now. It's uh, somewhat loosely related to the previous HEDT schedules. We're within a one to two year launch period for the next platform. But the current rumor is that the new Cascade Lake X lineup will still be using the mesh interconnect architecture that's found on Skylake X as opposed to the Rainbus architecture. And 
uh, it should be heavily targeted at multi-threaded workloads similar to Skylake X, like the 7980XE. This is a continuation of that. For other information, we broke a story a while ago that Intel would be shipping B360 and H370 platforms in first quarter of 2018. We received some documents uh, through a source who is partnered with Intel and were able to determine first quarter for those. That looks like it remains the case. So that's still on. The uh, slides we published don't really have any changes to them. And these platforms should be shipping alongside the new Pentium, the i3, the i5 uh, CPUs, and that and i7s actually. And that includes parts like the i5 8650, 8550, uh, 8500B, the 8320, 8020, the Pentium Gold lines. There's a ton of CPU SKUs and uh, Anantech has a massive table with all these details if you want to learn more. For the basics though, the, the kind of new one is the B demarcation. So this is presently undefined, I think, but it could be uh, indicative of intended use in something like a B platform, B series platform, which originally was targeted for businesses, but has kind of been commandeered for use as budget gaming builds. But that's kind of what our suspicion is right now. We also don't know the TDP of those, might be lower TDP. The next news item is kind of cool. So this is a Reven Diable closed loop liquid cooler. The manufacturer announced their new Naya 240 closed loop cooler, which offers users the ability to add coolant dye to the loop, showcased through an acrylic pump block housing and lit with an LED backlight. The same injector port can be used to refill the cooler easily as well, which we could have used a few days ago. And the cooler is designed in a way that the radiator can be mounted in any orientation according to Reven, rather than the traditional preference of mounting with the tubes at the bottom. This is, in some ways, similar to some Asetek coolers with the cold plate though, which is also convex, like some of Asetek's, and so the heat transfer and contact should be better on a CPU IHS. Reven is using all aluminum parts here, which we've previously found to have minimal impact in some cooling loops, depending on the size and the fan spec, and the fans are more likely to have an impact in a meaningful way anyway. The Reven unit uses higher airflow fans, and we'll see if we can get our hands on testing this one at some point in the future. EVGA also showed its new FTW silent, or ultra silent, excuse me, cooler today, which is effectively an ACX 3.0 cooler that's three slot. It's two and a half slot for the cooler, but they've just gone ahead and taken all three for the uh, the expansion slot cover, which makes sense. You might as well support the card with it if you're going to use it anyway. So this is an ACX cooler with more mass. The extra aluminum mass should help EVGA in competing, especially noise normalized, with some of their 2.5 slot competition, like the Strix and some of the MSI cards where EVGA has fallen a bit behind, specifically because they've had two slot designs. That extra 0.5 adds a lot of aluminum mass, and that'll help them out there also help them keep lower fan noise by way of lowering the fan RPM because you just let the sink uh, take care of most of the heat. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be $500, which for a 1070 Ti is a bit steep. You're kind of getting into 1080 territory there. So kind of hard to justify depending on what your 1080 options are plus $20 over that. But uh, either way, that will probably start coming to other NVIDIA products from EVGA in the future, even if it's Volta, but we'd expect to see that continued. This one's just sort of an interesting and fun story. So Samsung and KDDI tested a 5G wireless performance on a 60 mile per hour train, uh, pretty close to Tokyo. And this was over a one mile distance for the test. So while traveling 60 miles per hour, the uh, train or the, the wireless device on the train was able to successfully transfer at peak rates of 1.7 gigabits per second, which is faster than most home internet, at least in the US anyway. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. It'd be great if we had that here, though we'd also need trains that go that fast first, I guess. So that's, uh, that's what they're working on. That was done through Samsung 5G routers and radios that they had positioned along the track and uh, is a continuation of their infrastructure rollout in Asia. Final item here, sales for the week. These are still going on. Some of these are pretty good actually. The Gigabyte Gaming K7 I'll point out first. This is an X370 Ryzen motherboard, which is noteworthy because Ryzen's been on massive sales for the last few weeks now, last two weeks or so. So those continue. The motherboard is on sale for seven days, six from the, the posting of this video. 
It's $160 marked down from 210. This is actually a sale, not like a markup and then pull it down. And this in our AM4 best overclocking boards roundup was the winner for Buildzoid's overall favorite, just in terms of price, performance, and overclocking capabilities. It's got a clock gen, all that stuff, and the heat the VRM is pretty good, heat sinks decent. So that'd be a good pickup if you're into heavier overclocking on Ryzen. Obviously, you could go cheaper, but if you want something that's good and that is objectively going to be a good high overclocker, that's the board we've kind of been recommending lately for high-end Ryzen OCs. Some monitors as well. The uh, Dell Ultra Sharp is currently $300 for the uh, the 1440p Ultra Sharp. That's an IPS display, 25 inches, 6 millisecond. And this is a monitor that focuses more on color accuracy and is more interesting for professionals. Obviously, you get a 4K gaming monitor or something like that for about the same price right now. And that would be something like the LG 27MU58P-B, which we'll link below so you don't have to memorize that. 27-inch 4K display, 5 milliseconds, and FreeSync. And uh, the thing I like about this monitor is the tilt, swivel, pivot, and height adjustment on the stand. So this is, I'm pretty picky about this with our monitors that we have where uh, it's nice if you can rotate it so you could, for example, display code or something like that. But uh, So those are decent pickups. That's 400 right now, but it, it probably will end, I don't know, sometime soon. There's a million monitors that go on display around the holidays though, so don't worry if you miss it. But yeah, those will be linked below along with all the articles. Uh, the biggest thing for us to keep an eye on right now is going to be the AMD RX 560 equals 460 story. So hopefully we get a response from AMD that's official. We've uh, given them at this point most of a day, basically a whole day to respond. Uh, so when they do, check below as soon as you watch this video. So thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our stickers. I'll see you all next time. So four gigabytes means four gigabytes. God damn it. <laughs> gigabytes. <laughs>